Buying a new car can be a daunting and expensive ordeal. Buying an old car, what thought to be something to save you money, actually ends up a lot of times costing you more. So I actually had a, a YouTube follower of mine send in a question that he wanted answered. Um, now, basically, when doing an old restoration like this, you have to make the choice as to how you want to proceed with it. Whether you want to build it fully back to factory specs like it would have been fresh off the assembly line, which tends to be the most popular uh, version of restoration, or at least from in my point of view, which is again my point of view, or you can do what I always do to cars. Now, two main things I do um, is a rolling restoration, which is what all my projects are, the big FC, the golf cart, this one, all of them, are driving as I fix them. This is less expensive for me because I can take it piece by piece and not throw all that money out at one time. So, um, Richard Frazier, he asked, um, I need to find parts. Where can I find parts? Where can I acquire parts? Where do you find parts? Help me out. So, I've written down some things to kind of help everybody out in regards to restoring old Jeeps or any car for that matter on how you can kind of start with this and where the best place to look for this stuff is. So, first, eBay, obviously. It's going to be a great way to find um, new old stock parts or original components from the car that are, that are used from uh, flywheels, transmissions, motors, uh, brakes, interior. Uh, for even myself, I sell the interiors for all of the FC trucks. So that's nice. People can find my uh, seat covers there. I also do armrests, other things. So um, then there's uh, online parts warehouses. You know them, JC Whitney, Jags, uh, Summit. A lot of those parts that work with these older vehicles are still available, and a lot of the consumables. So we're talking uh, torque converters, if it's an automatic, uh, clutch plates. We're talking brake drum, uh, brake pads or shoes. We're talking, you know, air intake, carburetor, whatever the case may be. A lot of those parts are still attainable. Next, we have uh, a lot of companies out there like Just Jeepster or Jeepster Man. For the FC, we're going to have a, a lot less components available, but there are still some out there through Willys Works or Kaiser Willys. So keep that in mind. Um, now we have modern Jeep parts as a choice as well. So Quadratech is one big company. Um, you also have a lot of other smaller companies that make specific components for Jeep JKs and TJs, but a lot of that stuff is transferable to the car. A great example is the hinges for the hood. Original hinges for this, I couldn't find. However, the hinges are the same through all the years, and I believe these are off of a, an 80s or a 90s model Jeep Wrangler, so you can find them. Um, next, uh, offer up. Craigslist, a let go, all these local selling sites just like Craigslist where you can post up and sell things quickly. Now, one thing to think about, and I guess the trick here with those websites is that sometimes people don't know what they're selling. So they'll post something up, they'll put a price on it, and it'll say Jeep. That's the only descriptive term. So if you go into those systems and you just search Jeepster or Commando, you will find some components, but the reality behind it is people don't always pay attention. Or if the components have been sitting long enough, they don't even know what they go to. So searching under more broad terms are always a great way to find components. For instance, the motor in a lot of these cars are Buick motors. There are some AMCs and then of course some original Willys motors. Um, so if you just search the word commando, you're not going to find any of the motors to be honest unless they're with a frame and somebody's saying, hey, I'm selling this commando frame and motor. So if you simplify it down to Dauntless or Buick or V6, you can a lot of times find things that other people didn't. So a great example is the FC, the motor, transmission, transfer case, um, the, the f an extra set of rear fenders for the Jeepster, the hard top here, um, and the wheel carrier that I have on this Jeep, I actually found on OfferUp under the title Jeep. That was it. And all the picture was was a bucket of components. So I looked through the bucket, and the reason I knew it was Jeepster parts is because the rear light bezels was, was sitting on top of the bucket. So you do have to scour. It's not something you can just search one term and poof, you're going to find 
all this stuff. So uh, Craigslist, uh, OfferUp, and uh, even Facebook Marketplace, uh, let go all that. Next, I wanna or your local newspaper, depending on what region you live in. I wanna seems to be a South thing, uh, you know, North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia. I wanna is a local paper you can put anything in. Um, I think it's like 25 cents a post and you can post cars, you can post goods, free things, garage sales, puppies, whatever. And there's a lot of opportunity to find old timers with Jeep parts. Because, um, and I'm not saying anything against anybody, whether they're not technically uh, inclined or not. However, old cars are often owned, fixed, and hoarded by older people. That's just the reality of it. So finding them can sometimes be you're driving down a road, you see it in a field, you stop, you chat. Um, but there are a lot of ways to find components for Jeeps. Um, now let's talk a little bit about other options, alternatives. So we, we've talked original OEM, we've talked new old stock, we've talked aftermarket support for modern vehicles. But what we really never talk about when you're restoring is fabricated parts. So a great example, this Jeep has a parking brake, right? It's a pull lever parking brake. The cables run back, there's a stop for the cable, and then down to the drums. They don't make the stop bracket for that cable anymore. So the only way to make the stop bracket was to weld it up myself and put it in. And that's what you have to do. So a lot of the components you're going to use may be restored, made yourself, custom, one-off components. I did that for the choke mount on the carburetor. I couldn't find one that would work for me, so that's what I did. I also made a custom accelerator clamp that holds the accelerator cable so it can uh, do its action. Uh, and then, of course, on the interior, I'm not using the original dash. I'm not using the original switches. Everything's been moved to aftermarket components because this particular candidate for restoration was not going to be, um, it's not going to be adequate. The parts with it weren't in good enough shape to restore it. So my idea was an off-roader, daily driver, fun little just beat up pickup truck or full cab or convertible, whatever mood I'm feeling in that week. And you can do it on a budget. So I highly recommend anybody out there who's interested in doing something. There's nothing worth doing that's not worth trying. You're not going to make it worse. If you don't have any floors in the car and you cut out all the old metal and you you know, booger weld yourself new floors in, well, guess what? The car has new floors now, whereas before it was rusted. There's a lot of stigma around restoring cars and not doing it showroom quality. But the reality of it is 90% of people don't have the time, money, or energy to restore a car like, uh, you know, your Motor Trend channel guys do on all their Discovery Channel shows or History Channel shows. Your average Joe doesn't have the money for that. So the reality is you can do this yourself on a budget. Really, I think the bulk cost of this vehicle was the original purchase, which was, what, $1,900, $1,800, I don't remember, um, the wheels and tires, and then the suspension. The rest was just odds and ends. So the carburetor, I just rebuilt all the, the wiring, all the plumbing for coolant hoses, all that was still there, and I was able to use it. So I highly recommend anybody looking to do a project like this, take it on. You're not going to hurt anything, and you're going to learn a lot along the way, whether you're buying the components, building the components, or trading for components, you can find a lot of the stuff to keep these bad boys on the road. Now, it's going to differ from vehicle to vehicle, but hey, take your time, search out there. You can find it. Just broaden your search terms. And Mr. Frazier, we appreciate you dropping a comment below. We appreciate you all for watching the video. We hope you have a lovely day.